scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? That means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence. Are we together? Carelessness. Taking life for granted. Taking things for granted. Taking opportunities for granted. Oh, there's a free mentorship session with my pastor. But what is that about? I mean, I can always get it. Careless approach to life. One day I will be anointed. I, I think there's, there's always time. All this fasting and prayer is, a, is an interruption to my life. Carelessness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? Yes. In athletics, in football, and most sports they have an age range no matter how passionate you are about it once you pass that age range sorry for you football they have an age range tennis and all of these sports they have an age range athletics it is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny so carelessness revelation chapter 3 and verse 11 Revelations 3 and verse 11. Read with me please if you are a Christian and you can see it. One to read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast that no man. Carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric let another take. Carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. That ignorance is a plague in this kingdom. It says they know not, neither will they understand that they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lack of light. Verse 6 says, I have said, all of you are gods and you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in the next verse, verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance ignorance is a terrible plague isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine it says not because you are tired of sitting there for your light has come not because your light is around it's always been around but the day it comes to you ezekiel chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he had an instruction rise up and he had no strength he says, but the spirit entered into me, verse 2, and set me upon my feet. It takes light. It takes an understanding of the ways of God. 
Many people are ignorant of the ways of God. We just live our lives sociologically. Sadly, you hear this all around our society. Why sayings like one day go better? Why sayings like, um, I know one day, one day things will change. You see, all those kinds of thinkings will be to our own peril. Our lives must be intentional. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. The quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination. Our understanding the ways of God. Not just a religious study of scripture. But study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom. Are we blessed? Number four. Why do we lose in life and in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. The fourth reason why we lose, abuse and misuse. In Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, when you read from verse 14 down to 30, Matthew 25, the Bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents. One was given five, the other two, one. The Bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent. The other one with two returned back with a hundred percent. And the one who had one, already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger. And he went and buried it. You bury seeds, not talents. And when the master came, he said, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you did not sow. So I thought instead of wasting my time, let me bury it. Here is your seed. And God called him wicked and unprofitable that everything god gives you let me tell you something you see we talk a lot about transfer whether well transfer or it's not only unbelievers that good things leave believers who have who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things because god is a god of of caution and he's a god of responsibility if you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaves and two fish and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest he will say go and gather the crumbs but tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again god was so meticulous he showed us his sense of responsibility and caution when all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left he said go and gather the crumbs and they gathered 12 baskets full abuse there are people who have abused power. There are people who have abused and misused money. There are people who have abused and misused the anointing. Abused and misused leadership. Africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels of abuse and misuse of authority and power. The fifth reason why we lose in this kingdom it can be because of the tests and the trials that we are going through it is possible that because of the dealings and the trainings you are going through in the spirit for the sake of your destiny momentarily certain things can be withdrawn from your life that is true the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that during your period of training it was apostle james chapter 1 from verse 2 please give it to us james 1 and verse 2 he said count it all joy my brethren when you go through diverse temptations secure your stability with this knowledge he says knowing this james chapter 1 from verse 2 knowing this that the trying of your faith he says works patience are we together verse 3 and that when patience has had its full work in you, it will be able to build you paraphrasing so that you may be perfect and entire. Wanting, the word wanting there is lacking. Nothing. So sometimes God takes things from you so that tomorrow you will not have any lack again. There are times that God will take your seed of today away from you so that tomorrow you will not need to beg again. It is not, listen, God does not just give. He also takes away but when he takes away he really is a, a spiritual investment because with god it will always come back hallelujah yes 
so these are the five reasons that i piece together from scripture as to why people lose a quick recap number one that people lose because of lack of discernment that people lose because of carelessness that people lose because of ignorance of the laws of life destiny and the kingdom that people lose because of abuse and misuse but then that there are times that this group of people because of the seasons that they are in with god the season of dealing that they can go through tests and trials job chapter 1 when you read from verse 9 the whole text is from verse 9 to 22 job chapter 1 from verse 9 to 22 but let's look at at least 9 10 and 11 the bible says then satan answered the lord and said "Doth job fear god for nothing next verse hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land now hear what satan says but put forth your hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse you to your face in other words job's allegiance and loyalty to you oh god is fake he is only saying it on the strength of those things the next verse that should be 12 and the lord said unto satan very scary scripture behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not thy hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord and then sin two is what begins to happen in the earth there was a day the bible calls it a day of adversary that in every man's life there is such a phenomenon a day of adversary that if you turn aside in that day the diagnosis is that your strength is small hallelujah i wrote here keys for restoration let's hurry up and touch on them so we can pray now that we have seen the factors that are responsible for losses please don't just write these things study them and see where it applies to your life for some of you it is lack of discernment you see seasons are like the hand of a clock when you miss it it may come back but you will have to wait a very long time so like the magi the wise men you have to be discerning to discern moments that you can capitalize on keys for restoration it is true that god is a restorer it is true that god can restore hallelujah such a powerful comfort for the saints that no matter what you've lost the mystery i hope that we'll be able to deal with it is that everything that leaves you is still on earth now that's a very good news if it leaves me and it is still on earth then there is hope for recovery and scripture says there is hope for a tree do you know why there's hope for a tree because provided the earth from where it came out from is still there there is hope for a tree there are four keys that i wrote here that are prophetic roadmaps i wish we had time to walk this as seen in the life of joseph but if any one of you in this assembly following online from any part of the world if you walk through this process i give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture regardless what the situation is you truly will come out are we together this is where i want you to pray in one minute cry and say lord open my eyes no assumptions open my eyes in the name of jesus that that which you are about to show because many of us are at this point now haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise i am showing you a prophetic roadmap by the spirit that a way out can come if you can see are we blessed now look up please receive with meekness these truths that i want to teach you 
the first key i have found if you want to experience restoration in your life your family your spiritual life your finances your destiny the first key to restoration according to scripture is self-examination and evaluation the first biblical key to experience lasting restoration the power of self-examination not just prayer not just fasting not just finding a man of god in that order of priority self-examination there is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 3 and verse oh dear look let's look at luke 15 luke 15 i wrote a scripture there that i can't seem to find luke 15 from verse 17 to 20 the bible talks about the prodigal son the story of the prodigal son remember the story the bible says how that that gentleman provided he was staying with his father he was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father and he wanted to live life at his own terms and then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years notice lack started when he left his father now the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners because it's a family it has nothing to do with sinners number two for your information the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle the only difference is one acted out his own whereas the other hid his own in the heart both the elder brother and the old and the younger brother did the same thing the only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion but the elder brother also had his own hidden there are we together now so the bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine pigs eating from them and then read verse 17 please the first five words or six words one to go and when he came to the bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him listen human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life please keep that scripture there he came to himself how do you come to yourself by thinking there is the voice of your heart the bible says say not in your heart so you don't just think you can speak in your heart he came to himself he said how many hired servants is called the power of thoughtfulness if you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny self-examination are we together many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives why am i like this why is my church not growing lord you called me why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week i am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture i'm a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of god why is it not speaking in my life he came to himself there are times you need to go for a retreat not just to pray the bible said be still and know there is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings are we together that you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong he came to himself january this happened just when i was recovering my wife got sick just when she was recovering my child got sick just when he was recovering no 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 this is more than sickness i see that there is a handwriting of satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness it's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities and so thoughtfulness now is a luxury but believers hear me in this end time we must trust god for grace to hide away from people 
if you're a man of god here respectfully this is an honest advice you will never be a cutting edge tool in this end time if you the 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 gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around joshua selman it means we are making progress we need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back in fact in the spirit the more god honors you he does it by hiding you that everything that is glorious is hidden if all of you is seen by all men you are not powerful and when rebecca saw isaac she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him as soon as she saw isaac the one she would be connected to she veiled herself it is the reason why your heart is hidden it is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body like apostle paul was teaching are hidden don't be embarrassed when god hides you he's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you are we together but we're dealing with self-examination the young man sat down one day and came to himself he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father he said and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy he had not gone no he was discussing self-examination that in the name of jesus i will not be a lazy man in this abuja again the bible says the earth is the lord's i know there is a portion for me i have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that i know my father did not train me i know i did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties but if i continue to give this excuse i will find out one day i'm 50 years 60 years 70 years giving excuses from today i make up my mind self-examination This life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor. Every time he's prophesying, I stand and I say, oh, I'm the one washing his car. And for five years, I've not received any testimony. I come back to myself. I'm coming for this service with my heart open. And if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. Self-examination. Fear a man who has sat down to think. He's ready to rise listen let me tell you how restoration came to samaria i wish we had time we would have walked scripture tonight the bible says there were four lepers for as long as they were silent and not thinking they remained on the ground but when prophecy came the spirit of wisdom landed on them and they began to think and contemplate why sit we here till we die they began a conversation charlie parus let's get up if we fall into their hands at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny instead of sitting down and giving excuses nigeria is not working let me go and look for land at least somewhere i may not have the money to buy it but they will not arrest me for seeing let me let me let me tr trust god for grace self-examination no I, I'm, I'm, I think Reverend Abba is too busy to see me I, I need this grace and I keep seeing him in my dreams but I'm sure one day by God's divine mercy he will connect us you are joking you are really joking one day you have to sit down and ask yourself am I ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood and you may get up and say i will come and sit in the church here on that day god will say my son please come around and just stroll you see the the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father that means the father was already walking too but he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith someone say in the name of jesus please shout it say in the name of jesus i receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful i kill every excuse over my life my ministry my destiny turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of giving excuses why i remain small why i fail i'm tired of giving excuses why the unction of the spirit is not upon my life there are enough anointed vessels for my life to change someone is praying please be serious pray 
Shape kato saziata Embreke toske baruta shiata Someone is praying In the name of Jesus Come to yourself Come to yourself I'm tired of laziness Come to yourself Shibarus kadiba hashalada one more minute as you pray hallelujah in the name of jesus please sit down i want you to enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that i'm going to go back home and ask questions we have an altar in our family it's not new the altar brought my grandfather he brought my father so i'm suspecting that's what is happening i'm sure one day i'll think about it oh my goodness oh no sir oh no sir one day you have to wake up by 2 a.m and say sleep you hang on i am sick and tired of this i come to myself that what killed my father and god opens your eyes to see that there is an arrow looking for your destiny and for your children and you stand with power and fire self-examination it was god's servant bishop Oyedeko that said when they started the church in kaduna listen to me i started ministry in zaria i know the spirits and the altar in that territory the lifespan of impact is three years if you reach three years something must bring you down and bring your ministry out in shame so i understand what you were saying because they are ancient gates and he said the church was not growing he would have given the excuse but he said you know what let's gather a few of the leaders and they began to examine to contemplate suddenly the spirit of god brought him out according to him and showed him a thick layer of darkness that misrepresents the ministry and he he did something about it and all of a sudden doors open why are my younger brothers feeding me why am i the one who i am the one who invites all of them for encounter programs and yet at this level of life i've not been able to build a house at this it's not like your faith is tied to those things but hear me there has to be a consolation to your christian experience if by and large fruits do not grow on that tree life will not give you forever as an excuse are we together until you love your destiny more than sleep you are not ready to rise there are times when you should it's not an attack you just sit down and you are angry and say look my wife wake up we need to discuss this thing what is going on in this family abuja is a good land someone came to abuja in january and right now they have seen the faithfulness of god we've been here since 1998 something is wrong we confess our ignorance but for starters let us come to that point of recognition I can assure you if we call God's servant your pastor and father today to come and hold this mic and tell you his story of sojourn through this land I am sure that we are going to weep in this place like a funeral a testament of audacity and power waking up in the night thank God for your dream Joseph had a dream but you wake up to fulfill it dreams are powerful but they don't happen in the realm of the spirit men who dream wake up can you prophesy and say myself wake up one more time myself wake up don't be embarrassed this is a conference myself wake up hallelujah wake up he came to himself number two few minutes and we're done tonight the second key that provokes restoration in this kingdom is the power of brokenness. Psalm 51 and verse 17. It is not enough to examine yourself. You must get to a point where the Bible says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. It says a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God thou will not 
despise. That means God cannot ignore a broken person. Brokenness requires many things. A recognition. And then you have to admit brokenness. Lord, it is my, I've been living life at my own terms. I am sure it's my pride that has brought me to this place. And Lord, I'm not ashamed. I go down on my knees to you who is the maker of the heavens and the earth. If you don't help me in this city, I cannot rise. I come before you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Brokenness. Brokenness is a very powerful mystery. As a man of God, you come to God broken. Lord, I love you, but lately I found out I've just been doing ministry just for the sake of money. And it may not be that I'm evil, but sincerely I think uh, maybe, maybe there are things in my life. I'm, 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 there, 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 are, there are too many compromises, but I come before you sincerely. There is one thing I know about God. When God sees brokenness, he cannot ignore it. Genuine brokenness. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Where you open up your heart sincerely like the psalmist and say, search my heart and try my thoughts. Check, oh God, if thou see any evil way in me, please lead me to the way everlasting. Some of you here, if you are broken enough, you will come out of that situation. The problem is you are still giving explanations and then hoping. You see, this pride is a dangerous thing. Whatever you do, fight pride from your life. You cannot do bold face for life. You have to just humble yourself and say, Lord, show me mercy and help me. A broken and a contrite heart. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors restoration in this kingdom? Are we making progress? Knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. Knowledge. You need knowledge. A recognition of the grace and the mercy of God is important, but you need knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The B part is my part of emphasis. It says, through knowledge shall the just be what? There is a kind of deliverance that is conducted by casting out the spirit influences behind that situation. But there is a kind of deliverance that happens as a fortification through knowledge. The Bible says to preach deliverance, not only to conduct it. There is a dimension of revelation that secures deliverance. Everyone please say knowledge. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 amplified says arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light you see it's important for us to know that we need light light enough not just light Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You need to go for knowledge. Gather the tapes of your pastor. Gather the CDs. Take a three days time of fasting and prayer. And sit down and flog it out with destiny. Lord, open my eyes. What is the key to speed? Open my eyes. What is the key to sustainable influence? Open my eyes. Why are my hands empty? Lord, open my eyes. And while you are listening to the message, suddenly, as the man of God is ministering, light breaks. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. God will open your eyes to explain to you the mystery of an empty hand. He said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Lord, why have I not gotten a property, whether for myself or something? I know there is a way. Psalm 44, I think, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. So this is not a, a thing of sword. 
neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst a favor unto them Luke 2 52 and Jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with God and with men Esther chapter 2 from verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her verse 17 now says same scripture it says and Esther was loved by the king above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than suddenly you begin to pray it in your life and walk those keys and your life will change like day and night is god helping us we need knowledge please fight ignorance like you fight satan fight ignorance Ignorance. ignorance is a dangerous thing in this end time you cannot live your life wishing and hoping you must get exact knowledge the Bible says to walk circumspect as wise and unwise arrange the various aspects of your life where you are trusting God for sustainable lifting and fish out the mysteries that connect your desires to your destiny what is responsible for speed what is responsible for church growth what is responsible for transgenerational impact and influence what is responsible for ever increasing fire what is responsible for the anointing of the spirit what is responsible for relevance within the context of a generation there are mysteries that control these dimensions it is the glory of god to hide a thing but it's the honor of the kings to search it out I was teaching in Lagos and I gave a parable that the Lord opened my eyes to see theologically it's called the parable of the lost coin the Bible says that a woman lost her coin in a room she knew that there was a precious jewel in that room that could make her wealthy could make her great but it was missing and the first thing she did was to light a candle light you cannot search in darkness the second thing she did was to find a broom. With that broom, she swept everywhere. That's how we search for things. A candle and a broom. A broom talks of your hunger and your consistent pursuit. You sweep by getting all the tapes your pastor preached on faith. You don't get one or two because you may find part one of the revelation that will liberate you here then you now go to a 2016 message and find the other parts that god is building for you it's called sweeping you need light enough i made a statement a few days ago morning the breaking of day does not depend on time it depends on the victory of light over darkness every time light prevails over darkness you call it day it is not when it is six o'clock or 8 a.m that you say it's day no all through the night there is a warfare between darkness and light the time that light wins is what you call day so if light wins by 2 a.m it will become day hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.